Hey there, welcome to the channel. My name is Becky and today we're going to do a project together. I'm doing a make it your own challenge where I take one old kit that I've got laying around and do it, but I'm going to make changes to it to make it my own. So today I picked up uh, one of the old um, art projects that I had from Let's Make Art. It is a honeybee tutorial. So here's the, oops, let's do that right side up. <laughs> here's the, um, the finished project that uh, Let's Make Art gives you. It's this cute little honeybee in this um, landscape mode. It also comes with instructions. There's this instruction sheet, kind of a step-by-step -step guide. It comes with uh, line work for the bee itself, as well as the paints needed and some paper needed. So I really liked the project, but I wanted to make it different. I wanted mine to be in portrait mode, and I wanted to add a little bit of additional embellishments to it to make it more interesting because I felt like just a single B in portrait mode was kind of boring. Uh, a couple things that I really liked about the idea of doing this is I've got a couple of goals for myself that I set for 2023, one of which is to use up art supplies that I've got lying around, and the other one is to make more art outside of my sketchbook and this actually fits into both of those categories so i was super excited to do it so um why don't you join me in the disembodied hands view and we will get started i want to change this project i want to do the the b i don't want it to be in landscape format i want it to be in portrait so i'm going to have to take this outline and make some modifications to it additionally i want to put some honeycomb shapes up here in the corner and use this gold foil uh, to embellish those. So I'm going to take this project, but I'm going to make it my own. I'm going to do my own twist on it. So in order to get started, I think the first thing I'm going to need to do is figure out how I need to change this B in order to get it to fit on the page. I don't like that the uh, back of it is so chunky, so I'll probably make him a little bit skinnier. but I like the overall idea of the layout here. I like the look of the bee in this painting. So I'm going to follow a lot of the steps fairly uh, closely, but definitely make some modifications to make it my own. So as I mentioned, the first thing that I think I need to do is take this bee and make some modifications to it. So I'm going to take a piece of paper and I'm going to trace some of the bee stuff on here and then make some minor modifications as I'm working on it. I kind of like the overall shape of the, I guess this is probably the thorax here, but, but I'm just going to make it a little bit skinnier. So I'm not quite tracing exactly what was there. I'm just making a little bit skinnier and roughly following the ideas that it had on there. Um, making sure to make this look like it's rounded out a little bit. Um, it's not exactly following what they had there. I don't know, there's a shape here. There's a little shape here. Not sure what these shapes are. I'd have to look at the finished piece again to see what that is. And then there's fuzziness here. And if you've ever seen a bee up close, they definitely are a little bit fuzzy, hairy. Um, it's kind of neat. You can actually, some bees, you can pet them. It's kind of weird to think about. I actually have done that before. Uh, I had um, one of my brother's friends had bees for a little while and they were a very tame sort of bee and he knew what they looked like and we saw one in the front yard and I was like oh yeah you can pet these so I actually did I picked up the bee and it was perfectly happy to be on my hand and I pet it um, and it was just perfectly happy to have me hold it like that and it didn't do anything. It doesn't purr or anything like that. That'd be weird, wouldn't it? Um, but that was kind of a neat little experience when I was younger. As you can see here, I'm just, well, maybe you can't see, but I'm just putting the legs back on and I'm not quite following exactly what was there before, but um, just generally trying to put legs where I want them and making things a little bit smaller. I definitely know that I need to bring these wings in. So I'm wondering if instead of having them straight out, I actually bring them down a little bit. So maybe I'll have them kind of come down like so. Um, 
oh gosh, if they go out that far, that's not going to fit. Maybe like so, and then like so. Uh, I'm going to grab another piece of paper here. I don't know if I can tell from this if that's going to fit. I think I can make that fit uh, as long as I make this side narrow enough as well. I'm going to bring that side down just like I did with this other one. And that kind of goes like that. And then kind of like so. And it's okay that it overlaps the legs there. Uh, the wings are somewhat translucent or transparent, so you should be able to see through that. And let's see. Ooh, that just barely fits. So I might want to make that a smidge smaller, um, but that's what we're doing here, just trying, trying to make our modifications so that we've got uh, a B that we kind of like. Looks like there's some kind of fuzzy bits here. There's an eyeball here. And then the antenna. I'm being really loose with this because um, I'm not sure that this is exactly my final design, but I wanted to get something together so that I can try it out and see if it fits. Uh, I'm going to put some of the veining on the wings in a minute here, but let's take this off and take a look at it. Yeah, I think that looks like a B. Um, and I'm going to grab another piece of paper and see if it fits. So I've got maybe a quarter inch of space on either side. I know you can't see that. If I got out my light box, you'd be able to see it. Um, and I'll definitely need to get that out to trace it onto my watercolor paper. So you will see that shortly. Okay, so this was the original image from Let's Make Art. And this is my remodified remodified. This is my modified image. Uh, you can see that I pulled the wings down a little bit and made the abdomen skinnier. Um, so I've got my light box here and I've got my paper here that I want to transfer it onto. So I'm going to go ahead and light this up. I'll probably go, uh, there we go, nice and bright. And I think I want my bee to be down near, closer to the bottom because like I said, I wanted to do some hexagonal shapes up here for uh, the honeycomb. So I wanted to have some honeycomb up here and maybe, maybe a little bit more centered. That looks pretty good. I'm just gonna grab a mechanical pencil and roughly outline what I have here. Um, I'm doing this probably darker than I need to. I'll probably go over it with a kneaded eraser to remove some of that. Uh, these outlines will likely go away once I am done painting it, but they are very useful for knowing where I want to put the color. There is my final outline of my B. And then in order to get the hexagon shapes for the honeycomb, I debated how I wanted to do this, and I remembered that I have these Battletech maps. So Dave, Jay, this is for you. This is your Battletech lore. Uh, I'm bringing in a Battletech map and the Battletech lore that I'm going to share with you guys is at one point in college I was playing Battletech with my friend and I was driving a uh, an Atlas and I shot an AC-20 and shot it right through his head and Killed him within the first couple of rounds with an AC-20 to the head. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't look like I can actually see the hexes through there. So that's a bummer. I'm going to have to figure something else out. Okay, it looks like I can't use the light box, but I certainly can use a thinner piece of paper to draw some hex shapes on here. Which then I can use the light box to help me get my shapes onto my paper. I think that's pretty good for now. Um, we'll get started on the painting in a little bit and we'll see how 
things go if I decide to do all of this or not. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm going to get this taped up and then I'll be back in a little bit. Okay, so I have my outline ready. I'm not sure that you can see that very well. I've lightened it up quite a bit. I've got a bunch of the hexes up here for the honeycomb and a little bit down here. I'm not 100% sure if I'm going to use all of them up here or not, but uh, I've got everything ready to get started. So I'm just going to go ahead and get started now. I know there's a lot of different ideas about using art kits in the art community. A lot of people will look at this and say, hey, that's not real art. You're not actually doing the artwork. You're just following along the instructions and uh, copying something that somebody has already done. And for a long time, I felt the same way about art kits like this. I certainly wouldn't use an art kit in order to make a piece of art and then sell it as my own. I don't think that that is fair or a legitimate use of the art kit. I think that even for something like I've done here where I've changed a number of things, I wouldn't feel comfortable with selling this as an original piece because it's not really an original piece. I did make some modifications to it. I did change the wings and I added some additional things. But in my mind, I wouldn't feel comfortable with calling that an original piece and selling it. But for doing art that you're going to hang up in your house uh, and enjoy yourselves or even give to friends and family, I don't think there's any issue with doing an art kit like this and calling it your own. I think that you've put a lot of yourself into it. You've certainly taken the time and the effort to do the art kit, to follow the instructions, and produce a result that you are hopefully proud of. Along with getting a nice piece of art that you are proud of, that you get to hang on your wall or give to friends or family, you also get to practice skills with an art kit without the pressure of having to figure out what is the thing that I'm going to draw? How would I do this? Those sorts of things. The art kit will give you all of the supplies that you need in order to be successful, as well as instructions on how to accomplish some techniques that you might not know how to do on your own. I'm relatively new to watercolor, so doing things like this makes me feel a lot more comfortable with the material and feel like I could make projects on my own without following the art kit and that's really important and I think that's a really nice thing that things like this can provide to artists of any caliber. Another thing that you saw me do in this video was actually tracing things and I was tracing line work that was not my own. If I were going to sell this as an original piece of art that would certainly be frowned upon. I don't know that that's necessarily against the law, but I would certainly feel very wrong about trying to represent that as my own work because I did not draw the line work that I was tracing. As far as tracing the hex shapes, I don't see any issue with something like that. Those are difficult to draw. Those are a nice shape that you can trace and get accurate. Same thing with circles and things like that. If I had wanted to do this project, but be able to call it my own original idea, I would have redrawn the bee. I was actually honestly being lazy. I did not want to redraw the entire bee. I wanted to make some few minor changes to it and do this project, but I also wanted to add my own embellishments to it. So that's what I did. And again, I don't see an issue with that, especially for something that you are keeping for yourself or giving to a friend or family and not saying that it's your own original artwork. I'm not by any means trying to downplay the use of art kits and say that they shouldn't be done, that real artists don't use them or anything like that. I like art kits. I like to have them. They are a fantastic way to practice things and materials that you are not familiar with. I am not a watercolor artist. I have done some watercolor, but I am not super familiar with it. So things like this are really nice for me to use and get more familiar with the material and more familiar with different techniques. 
I feel the same way about tutorials. I think that they are a fantastic way of learning new skills and learning about new art supplies. I love doing tutorials either found on Skillshare or on YouTube or whatever. The thing that I wouldn't do for most tutorials is call the finished piece my own original artwork unless it was a hey make your own piece kind of a project but if I were following along step by step with a tutorial that somebody else created I would feel a little bit wrong about calling it my own original artwork. But after following along with a tutorial or doing an art project like this I would feel much more confident in using new skills that I had learned or using new art materials that I had tried out. And any project that I might try after that, I could certainly call my own original work. Even if I took an idea that I found online, like let's say I saw something on Pixabay or Pexels or something like that, and I saw a uh, picture that I really liked and I wanted to recreate that, I think that counts as your own original work because you are doing all of the work to recreate that. You are doing the work to plan it out and figure out what materials do I need, what colors do I need, those sorts of things. For me, figuring out what materials I'm going to use, actually doing all of the layout work, those sorts of things, that's what I would consider an original piece of art. I am not a lawyer, so do not take this as legal advice about how you can create original work and what you can call original work. Let's take a minute and look back up at what I'm doing on the bee right now. So I've got the legs in place and the most of the body done. I'm putting in some darker shadows there and you can see the middle legs I've made quite a bit lighter and there are sections of the back legs I have made lighter. The reason I've done that is those legs are going to be underneath the wing and so you're not going to see them quite as well and the color is certainly going to be lighter. I also used some wet on wet techniques on the middle part of his body in that really brown section as well as on his head because I wanted the colors to really blend and bleed together to make it look fuzzier. I didn't want to have to draw each individual line. I've also gone around the little middle part there and made it darker to make it look more rounded and make it look like it's sitting down into the tuft of hair. And right now I've decided that the head was too dark so I'm actually going back through and lifting some of the color off. In order to do that basically I need to get my brush a little bit damp. You don't want it wet. I get it damp and I'm then just kind of rubbing on the color and then you'll see me wipe off the color on that little rag that I have off to the side. So I keep doing that until I get everything as light as I want it to. You're not going to be able to lift all of the color off from your painting. You're not going to be able to get it back to the white of the paper, but certain colors will lift more than others. And this paint has actually dried and is lifting quite nicely. Some colors won't lift very well. Some papers won't let you lift very well either. Now that I have the head the way I wanted it, I am working on the wings. I've started with a wet on wet technique. I've put some clean water on the paper and wetted it and then I'm dropping in the color. I'm holding the piece upright so that the watercolor will bleed downwards. I want more color at the top than I wanted at the bottom. You may have seen me dab off some of the color afterwards. That was because I felt like the watercolor was a little bit too solid and a little bit too bright. I just really wanted a light glazing over top. So that put a lot of really nice texture in the wings that I was really happy with. That's a technique that you can use. You can use a rag like this or a paper towel. You can use a sponge, that sort of thing. Now I'm working on the veining in the wings. I've dipped my brush into some black 
watercolor and am just kind of creating a bunch of squiggly lines with the very tip of the brush of a much smaller round brush that I'm using here. If you hold your brush back a little bit further than I am, you can get much more squiggly lines. Um, the further up that you choke up on your brush, the further toward the bristles that you hold it, the more control that you have. Uh, the further back, the more loose it's going to be. Now I've decided to start working on those honeycomb shapes, so I'm using that bright yellow to fill in the shapes. Uh, you may have noticed that I've turned the canvas upside down to make it easier for me to get at. This is something that I do often. I will rearrange my paper in order to make it easier for me to work with. This is something that you should think about too. If something is really hard for you to reach or something, a line is really awkward for you to make, go ahead and turn your paper. There's no rules against that. You may have also noticed that I've removed some of the hexagons that I had at the top. I wanted a more irregular shape. I thought that would be more interesting to the eye. I also have some additional hexagons at the bottom and I'm not copying the exact pattern on the top and the bottom because I like the asymmetry that that gave the piece. At this point, I could have stopped. I was debating whether I wanted to use this gold foil stuff to put on some of the hexes or if I wanted to leave the piece as it was. I decided to go ahead and just push it and see what would happen. I kind of liked how the gold foil looked on there. I had not really used this material before. This came with a paint pour kit that I got from Michaels and I had used some of the gold flake in a paint pour project but I had not actually glued it onto anything. So I wasn't really sure how to do this. So I grabbed some Elmer's glue and watered it down with some water and took a crappy paintbrush that I didn't care about because I was afraid that it would ruin it and painted it on just like I would paint color on and then smooshed down the foil. I've seen other artists use gold leaf and they glue it on, they let it dry, and then they brush it back off. And so anything that wasn't glued down will come off. This worked okay. I think I should have waited a little bit longer for things to have dried. I also think I should have used full strength glue instead of watering it down. The end result is pretty decent, uh, but the things that I didn't like about how it looked was I wanted much sharper edges on my gold foil and possibly that's because this is probably not real gold and it is gold foil chunks instead of gold leaf. I really had a lot of fun with this challenge. It was fun to pull out the watercolors and to do some of these let's make art kits that I've got lying around that uh, I just wanted to use up. I've got this really cool project now, um, this cute uh, honeybee with the fun gold foil on it. I got to use some new materials like the gold foil and learn some stuff about that. And like I said, use some stuff up. I'm going to put it in uh, this picture frame that's back here. That's why I wanted to make it portrait mode so that uh, I didn't have to rearrange that whole thing back there. Uh, and I just kind of like that. So uh, hopefully you enjoyed this. If you want to see the make it your own challenge uh, made into a series, let me know below. Or if there are other uh, art projects or anything like that that you want to see me do, if there are paintings that you want to see me do, let me know and I will see what I can do about making those. Uh, like and subscribe and I'm just going to leave you with some shots of the finished piece. Bye!